here are five top tips to boost your confidence in your new career. So if you are a, a, a new or fairly new coach, practitioner, or wellness professional, you may be at that awkward stage of your career where you're, you have qualified and got your credentials and your skills, but you haven't yet got the experience and the results that will really make you feel confident in what you're doing. So I'm going to give you five top tips that you can do right now that will really start to transform your confidence because the lack of confidence is often a major barrier to getting started or to getting enough of that experience that will give you the results and that you can then embody and know just how um, good at you are at what you do. So. I'm Shane Pearson from Design Your Life Coaching. I'm also a mentor with the From Passion to Profit crew. Um, so let's get started. Number one, I would say own your story. And what I mean by that is really wonderful exercise for you to do is to uh, reflect on your own life, your own journey and your own history and write down their own version of it with a specific focus on all of the challenges or breakthroughs you have overcome especially the ones most um, relevant to your niche or to your, uh, your practice where you intend to be working. So for example, you may have had a health challenge um, that you've had to learn about and then find out specifics of what perhaps you were doing wrong in your life and what you had to do to change. You may have had to make big dietary changes such as going gluten-free or getting rid of dairy or um, shifting from the diet you were accustomed to to a much healthier diet that then helped your body to overcome that all really really powerful really useful you may have had personal breakthroughs in terms of relationships or career or um, weight loss or um, strengthening the body so whatever it is that you have already been through um, and achieved for yourself is embodied you have that in your cells and you can operate very confidently from that it would also this is also a great exercise to help you really nail down your niche so think of it is that your ideal client is the, the previous you when you realize that there are many many people out there who um, are at a at a stage where you were uh, before they made the breakthrough that you have made or before they made the changes and had a successful outcome that you have had, you start to realize, ah, you can embody that and operate confidently from that. So own your story. Number two would be to know your strengths. So be yourself because everybody else is taken. You might have heard that and maybe a little bit cliche, but this is really about knowing what you do best and really you know, this is about it's also about letting go of perhaps comparing yourself to others, focusing on what it is that you specifically bring to the table. And that may be something like being a really good listener. Maybe you're deeply empathic. Maybe you have a high level of emotional intelligence. Maybe you're a really detailed researcher. Maybe you have a fantastic memory. Maybe you have uh, access to a lot of resources. Maybe you... Um, are a fitness professional, or maybe you have um, made those changes we spoke about in, in the owning your story. So really get to know your strengths. And then again, like your story, own those strengths and operate them. Don't be afraid to um, operate from them consistently. And um, people will start to get the message that ah, unconsciously that this person has got these strengths. That will be particularly valuable to those people who are perhaps lacking those strengths a great balance in a perhaps a coaching relationship or in a, um, in a an alliance in a, in a wellness alliance or in a therapeutic alliance number three would be to reverse the gap i love this one it's a simple simple technique and we often don't do enough of it so right now you are probably have got an a uh, an intention you have a a future version of you in mind and we often have, we have a goal, we have an outcome we want to get to. There's a, a version of, of us that we want to become, but we're not there yet. So reversing the gap means rather than looking at the gap between where we are now and where we want to get to, we reverse that gap. When we are all constantly focusing on the gap between where we are now and where we want to get to and how big or how far that is or how much you have to do, that can be stressful and it makes us feel more inadequate or perhaps weakens our confidence. So a simple reframe is to go, ah, reverse that gap. So rather than looking 
uh, where you want to get to, look back and look at how far you have come. The gap between where you are now and where you used to be. Perhaps that was before you started training. Perhaps that was before you'd lost the weight. Perhaps, perhaps that was before you made those changes in your own life that empowered you and brought you to where you are now. Perhaps it's all those hours of study, uh, all those sacrifices that you have made uh, to get to where you are now. So reverse that gap and do that, do that often, especially when you're perhaps feeling yourself you caught yourself, you know, stressed out about how far you how far you have to get or how much you have to do to get to where you want to go. Okay, step four would be don't compare yourself to anyone. Okay, so you're probably all guilty of this. We all probably do at a certain level. Now we've never been in a never been exposed to so many people through our smartphones, our laptops, our computers and social media, et cetera. So it's very hard not to, uh, and if you're you know, in a new profession, you probably have your own gurus. You maybe have your own coach that you really aspire to be, become more like, and maybe it's like a, a healthcare professional, maybe it's a functional medicine expert or a big name in the field. And what we can start to do is unconsciously or consciously compare ourselves to them. Again, that's like the gap is extraordinary. So we're, guilty then of trying to be wanting to be like someone else so a lovely quote here from jim Rohn would be the only person to compare yourself to would be your former self similar to that reverse gap so comparing yourself to who you who you who you used to be that's the only really comparison you can make so when you can find yourself comparing yourself to perhaps you know an expert in their field you know they may be at this for decades it's often they've worked really really hard and then they get to a point where they're really hitting the masses so take ownership of you how far you've come and compare yourself to your former self the last one i would say is believe in your client the one of the most probably the most powerful thing we can do when we have a client who's trying to improve their life in some way, is to really believe in them. You will notice this if you think about um, a speech from a podium, and a, a, perhaps as a, a speech person makes at a, at a graduation or at a ceremony or a, a prize ceremony where they've been awarded a prize in recognition of their achievement. Often you will hear, I want to thank my my brother or my mother or my coach or my trainer or whoever for I thank you for believing in me when I was going through my doubt thank you for believing me when I didn't believe in myself there's something extremely powerful about that and when you really believe in your client especially when they don't believe in themselves that can be the difference that makes a difference it's simple not always perhaps easy but it's simple and when you can come with that attitude and from the start, get to know, really listen to your client, really get to know them and believe in them, that is powerful. And that is often what you will be remembered for, not for the information you've given, not for any clever techniques, not for anything, anything else. If you really believe in the client, wow, that will, that will really boost them and do, um, can be an extraordinary transformation for them, especially when someone, a lot of other people don't. So that's my five top tips. Um, I can expand on these and any of these if you want more. So do reach out and let me know. Get in touch with a private message or respond to the post. Okay, I look forward to having seeing you on the next video and uh, have a great day.